Sir, which is called Tejas Outlast back in Mumbai. Outlast. Ah, uh, yeah. So those were the oh, two okay. centers that we did that day. Lead back in Mumbai and Outlast back in Mumbai. Ah, okay, okay, I get it. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct, correct. Okay, I see, I see it, I see it now. I read the wrong thing. Cool. Sorry, thank you, Arya. <laughs> All right. Um. So this is it. Um. Uh, we're finally here at the. release of an album called Outlast which has been in the works for about 3 years some of the songs have been around for even longer than that i think when i put out the the teaser for the album which was you know a bunch of clips of which are from the last few years one of my friends uh, said wow this is really more than just an album it feels like more than just an album and i think it is it, for me it's like it's ex- extremely important Uh, as a piece of like documentation for of my life and and the way I feel in these uh, in these last few years, so many things have happened in this last year. It's crazy that I can't even imagine that we're finally here at the end of it. In the music industry today, in any 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 field, like survival is a human being's basic instinct. Forget even in 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 your field of work, like in life, generally speaking. So it's difficult to really say. uh you know it's it's just about work or it's just about music or it's just about your art form so outlast to me is just a an expression of that that survival is the basic instinct of every human being you know you want to outlast them all is what kind of the lyric means to me it's just about staying relevant and staying excited about like making music making music now there are lots of struggles and there are lots of challenges either financially or just logistically because we're getting older we need to like be be smart about it and not just go through it like it's a fun game like i think everyone starts with it being a fun experience but i think you learn a lot from the fun experiences on how to just be better at it and all of that plays into like the material that you write so outlast is an album to me is a complete sonic exploration we've gone crazy we've done everything possible that we could we've thrown synths in we've thrown strings in we've thrown horns in we've got acoustic drums electronic drums and it wasn't like okay fine you know because we have to paint different pictures are we like using all these different textures it was just the songwriting and the music kind of said okay fine you know do this and it came naturally it wasn't like oh we must write an electronic part in this song which is why we must do it uh it felt like more of an organic process in in the sense of what was supposed to happen per song adil jj and i have tried really hard to kind of make music that is very easy to listen to but is complex in structure and has the best of the best when it comes to like the way that it's been created and processed and edited and mixed uh i mean when you listen to the album you get a bit of diversity which calls for a different sonic approach and like note selection just musical decision making i mean i know this amalgamation eclectic group of genres all these nonsensical words that i have been used in the past to like explain albums which like cross genres cross like sounds i would just say like it was it's a it's an album which involves a lot of storytelling and when you're telling story you need that kind of expression to be able to engage the entire audience there isn't a brief way of describing the recording process for this album because it was done over 3 years it was done in every possible way you can imagine all the way from like doing demos in a jam room and producing on top of it to starting completely in the box electronically and chopping up loops that we recorded it was a bit of a a scattered recording process but i think it added a a lot of charm to the album cuz like i think with the past we've always done it very systematically so the songs feel like they were done they they do sound a lot similar to each other compared to like this album the songs sound very different which is really cool i wanted it to be such a thing that we didn't have to convince people so hard to kind of want to listen to the stuff so it's it's very easy to listen to but at the same time it's got depth i think <laughs> and it's got some substance uh and it's got stuff that is uh about me and my life and i think 
because I'm a pretty average guy, I think quite relatable to lots of um, guys and girls and, and others out there. So um, I really want to, I want people to be able to relate to it, but I want them to have a, a good time listening to it as well and not be such a struggle. <laughs> I believe all music is about community and any art form is about community and and yes you can be one artist but there are a lot of other artists around you that shape you and I guess that's what Tejas and Friends is all about you know it's about influences from people who are your peers and everybody all the collaborators who came on board for this project uh, Rohan Rajadaksha who played keys he, ar uh, he arranged some strings um, for, for the album as well uh, Reese Sebastian who is an amazing sax player also just a great musical mind uh, Apoov Isaac Lala who plays the guitar solo on our class they're, they're like a bunch of people who've like sprinkle little bits on onto this album Aria when she was tracking gave like harmonies Malika obviously is part of the band Malika Barrett amazing vocalist and somebody who I feel like I've been searching for for a long time somebody whose vocal kind of uh, timbre matches my own like uh, very very like perfectly and it's amazing to find these people kind of come together at this point of time in my life to to provide different parts of the album that I couldn't have done myself I mean, now we're not just doing it because we're trying to see an end goal here. We're trying to make something, we're trying to make it count. And the only way to do that is is just by like really thinking about like what 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 is what is this music. So like all these past learnings have come into play and it's made a new process uh, in how we've ri been writing the music. So the music is just standing on a lot more solid ground and there's a lot of fresh ideas to make it outlive and outlast anything that the band has done before this. I, I do think a lot of it is just catharsis. It really is the, the end uh, of something uh, that you know we started like a while ago and um, and I'm excited if, uh, if Small Victories is, you know, about trying and Make It Happen is about doing, then Outlast is definitely about persevering. And, um, and I think that's the logical conclusion of, of what this kind of arc has been. I mean, it's funny, like, I only listened to the lyrics properly when I felt sick and I thought I got COVID and I got a little bit like, I'm, I'm a paranoid human being sometimes about these things. and. Um, and I want to live life, you know, I want to live to the end. I want to do everything that I want to do. And and I guess you you want to do it to your fullest. And I guess Outlast is that expression of being able to say, okay, you know what? I am going to, my art, my, my life, my words, my lyrics, my music is just going to push ahead and Outlast. For me, this album has been very contemplative. Um, I've mentioned that it is about nostalgia and, and our desire to lean on it heavily um, especially these days and uh, and I didn't think that that is the only answer I don't think I think nostalgia is kind of like a it's a drug you know it's um, it allows people to kind of reminisce and while that's great not everybody has that opportunity all the time I, I have great memories from my youth uh, and from you know uh, my earlier days you know my early 20s and things like that uh, but I think I'm still more excited about what happens next. Like, this is the best time in my life so far, you know. My, my career is, is the best place it's ever been. Uh, I'm more in charge of who I am as a person. I'm more responsible as a person, I think. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, there's so, many, there's so many things that I'm so proud of now that I couldn't really say and, uh, earlier. And, you know, it always gets better as you get older. And I, I, I firmly believe that. And it also puts distance between you and the memories that you really don't want to relive. And I think that is also a blessing in some ways. And I think that's what our class is about. It's about like uh, discovering the idea that whatever is ahead of us is, is definitely going to be better than what came before it. And uh, I really, I truly need to believe that. 
um, for me and now I guess everyone you know like based on what we've gone through in the last few years I think that's what we need